And welcome to the Business Spotlight. I'm Pat Dewar. Today I have a very unique show for you. It, actually, for most of you, you'll probably get it as a product. It's, uh, the idea today will be to create a training for entrepreneurs that are really trying to grow their business, but their budget is, well, not as large as maybe the other guys. Because today's show is seven keys for marketing without money. How did I come up with something like that? Well, probably like most of the entrepreneurs out there, you started your business with something that sounded like, you're fired. <laughs> okay, maybe it didn't sound like that. Maybe it sounded like, well, we no longer have a position for you at this location because the, the industry has changed and we're having to, it. either way, you ended up with government assistance, i.e. unemployment for a season, and then you needed to create something with the acres of diamonds that you had to locate within your own body, within your own skill set. And for a lot of you entrepreneurs, you're laughing or smiling going, yeah, that, that's about right. I started with just a, you know, an idea, and then you created something that began to create some revenue, but you're trying to grow it, but you don't really know all the keys. And in fact, one of the things we've had other guests on here that talked about marketing, and marketing can be overwhelming. So one of the things that I wanted to do is break down what are some things that anybody could do, that anybody could start and employ like that, immediately, right away, cheap and easy, because for a lot of us, that's all we have. <laughs> and my guest today is somebody that does this naturally. We have been in each other's orbit for a few years, and I'm so thankful for Judy Hoberman. Her site is Selling in the Skirt. And of course, her background is coming from a male-dominated environment. She had to learn how to use her feminine wiles, as in skills that come naturally to a woman, to create results in a way that a man could understand and become effective. Judy, thank you so much for being on the show. I am so excited to be here. And I just want to clarify one thing. I made the choice to not have a position. And sometimes a lot of entrepreneurs do that as well because we are not in the right place in our lives. So sometimes it's a choice and we still have just the time and no money, so. Absolutely, and, and uh, that's exactly, what's really funny even with, with the way that I got started, it was, yes, it did sound a little bit like we've shifted gears right. and you, you're, we can't afford you anymore, but I had been preparing my heart and desire because what I found was is that m Monday through Friday, I was in what I call Dilbertville. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Got that. <laughs> Everybody's in their QBs, that sort of thing, okay? You stand up and you can see. You know, anyway, it was, it was an environment that was pretty sterile and you just did your thing and, and I ta take the PO and you know, create the sales and stuff like that. And I had a really high quota and, and had to still pluck from air my business. But the fact was is that on the weekends, 13 times a year, I would go to a self-improvement workshop over in Richardson called The Road Adventure, still going. And, but the thing was is that I would come back from directing a three-day weekend, and I can't sleep. I'm buzzing out of my brains. My wife is going, shut up. <laughs> we got work tomorrow. Right. <laughs> so the point is is that I had to go, I love this. This is okay. How do I get this Monday through Friday? And with enough passion, as you know, we can create our own world, and that happens. Now, but you said something really interesting, Patrick, because remember, even in, this, in the position that you didn't love in corporate, in Dilbertville, when you needed to get your name out there, you had a marketing department, and it wasn't your money. So when you become this part of the passion that you love, you don't have that marketing department anymore. Now you have to figure this out. So your seven steps is incredible, for a lot of us entrepreneurs that don't have a marketing department because now you are marketing and now you are sales and now you are the janitor. You're everything. Exactly. And for a lot of people, that's pretty overwhelming. Now, I know that, you know, Michael Gerber talks about the, in his ebook, um, the E-Myth right. Revisited and the original one, which I actually met Michael back when he put out his first version. But the point is, is that that's great. Have a plan, work a plan, systematize. That's great. But for a lot of us, we don't have long enough time, we got to generate money. Absolutely. I mean, we, we got miles to feed and bills to pay and you have to pluck from air the, 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 what's needed. Absolutely. So the first thing that I would say is 
your first key is um, look at who you know and how can you collaborate with them? How can you create a, a joint venture across marketing? Mm -hmm. What we're doing today. Right, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, the interesting thing is that as a new entrepreneur, you have to find who those people are. And so for me, um, when I first started, networking was the way to do it. However, you have to be very intentional about your networking. You have to do it two ways. One way is who's your target market, and you want to go where those people are, not where all your friends are. And the second is who are those strategic partners, and who are those people you could do joint ventures with. And so you have two different directions you have to go into, and that doesn't really cost a lot of money. I mean, obviously, if you join 700 networking groups. But you have to be very intentional to do that because that's the big thing. We've been collaborating for years. And every once in a while, we have this great thing we do together. And there may be nothing for a little while, but then there's something great again. But we have the relationship. And that's, you know, that is crucial. Well, in fact, one of the things that you said there is really important to, to recognize. When you're networking, realize that 85% of your networking people um, don't have any money. Just let's get real. Out of a room of 100 people that at any networking event, 85 of them don't have enough money to really do much of anything. 15% have some money. Mm -hmm. Out of the 15%, there are two or three in 100 that actually could afford you, usually, unless you're selling something that's a very low cost item. But when you're selling something that's like marketing or something that's, that's coaching and business development, those are usually a three to $5,000 adventure. Right, well, right. So you've got to, to connect with people. If you're selling a higher ticket item, you need to connect with people that sell or serve people with that kind of item. So for a lot of people that are gonna be on the show are gonna be attorneys, uh, the chiropractors, dentists, uh, uh, high-end financial planners, things of those, because those guys deliver a three to $5,000 solution. Right, and you also have to remember that for women, we want to help everybody. We right. do. We want to help everybody. So our market sometimes is this as opposed to a narrow and niche market. And so we don't want to leave anybody out. We want to make sure we can help everybody. But again, you know, the people that can afford you are the people that you need to be in front of. And yeah, it's great to be able to give back and pay it forward because I do that all the time. But we're still a for-profit company. And you still have to figure out how am I going to bring revenue in without costing me thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars that I don't have. Well, and that's a really important thing is that when you're marketing, kind of the second key there is that is that um, give first, mm -hmm. then but have hooks, have Velcro in your message, in your media, whatever. So when you give it forward, you, you create a product or a service or a newsletter, you do a radio show, mm -hmm. uh, and the radio show is called? It's Tough Talk Radio Network. It's Selling in a Skirt with Judy Hoberman. Weekly and show. Weekly Monday, show, Mondays Monday at? Monday noon, Central. So excellent way to give absolutely but it's also a great way to market because it it's give first but it has velcro there is ways to connect with you through that isn't there absolutely and you know again you know you keep saying things that bring me to the next point is you have to remember that when you're going into doing this networking if you're going in for yourself you'll get nowhere right you have to go in and say this i want to help you how can i serve you because in return hopefully it comes back to you it doesn't always but that's okay, because the people that are supposed to be helping you will help you. And a lot of times you talk to somebody and they just want to pick your brains. Let me just buy you coffee and pick your brains. And that's okay, and you should do some of that, because you need to get your message out. But you also have to find people that, you know, you can help each other. Right. Well, and I have to admit, though, the pick your brain concept is, is okay if you're working with somebody that potentially could be a client. Yeah. But if it's somebody that is just getting started and they really, it'd be better if you handed them a disc, one of the ways, and, and I'm going to tell you entrepreneurs something that's a little bit, it'll sound tacky, it's not meant to, it's just the reality, is that if somebody really couldn't be your client and they want to pick your brain, uh, have a pick your brain fee. Okay, it's $500, you'll pick up lunch. <laughs> it, it will stop the pick your brain fee concept coming at you from the wrong people, and, I ha and I'm not trying to be rude or exclusive, I'm trying to be realistic with, you only have so many hours in a day. And that's why I said you have to be intentional with your networking. When you meet people, you can't have one-on-ones with everyone. You can't, because you don't have the time, and you don't have the time to implement any, anybody or anything. So what you're saying is correct, that you have to be able to pick my brains, but here's the fee. Right, right, yeah. it's, a, it's great. Yeah. So the, the third step 
is really learn how to share, actually to, to target, learn how to target yourself properly. Now, you said women like to serve everybody. Yeah. Okay. But, you know, men, a lot of times they want to zone in on, you know, target in on that, that, that one niche because we understand there's riches and niches. How can an entrepreneur begin to, if they're a female, how can they begin to refine their message so that they attract the people that can afford them but serve a larger group? And how can the guys begin to uh, take their message and uh, orient their keyword properly so that they can be inclusive and exclusive? Is there a way? Well, I think first of all, male or female, you have to be doing something that you're passionate about. Just because I love to work with women doesn't mean I need to work with women in a class that I don't want to work with. So you have to be passionate about it. And you have to do some market research because, you know, you might want to help this group of people that clearly don't need your help. You know, so you have to do some market research. But I believe that what you want to do is you want to, you want to look and see what the problem is that you can solve. Where does that fit? So for me, growing through the, the ranks of all male-dominated industries, I know that there is a niche for me that are, are women and that they're in a certain level and they need my help. So that's who I target. But men are, who are laser-focused, they have to open it up just a little bit, still be passionate about it, but still be more exclusive. When you're more exclusive, people want to work with you. However, with that said, you also have to be accessible. Right. Because people that show up, get the access, and the access brings you profitability. Right. So you have to be able to be exclusive, but not in the ivory tower that you, no one can ever find you because they want a piece of you. They want to work with you. I, I so agree with the passion because, you know, even for me, uh, my passion, I wanted it to be my profession. Mm -hmm. uh, the one thing, and like you say, in uh, availability or ability to, to access mm -hmm. at some level, whether it's with a fee or with an email or something of that nature. I think that's really key in, in everything that we're doing. And, uh, and I, I just encourage you to, to make sure that if you're gonna do that though, and let yourself become available, that you, uh, um, that you have a, a message for those people at that time. Some pre-prepared, some uh, available a, 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 under the, the right circumstances. The next thing I want to go to, though, because I want to get to this, the, this area of your website. It seems like everybody has a website now. Everybody needs to have a website, and it doesn't have to be the one that's the most gorgeous and the most glamorous and everything else. It has to be user-friendly. It has to be user-friendly, <laughs> but uh, one of the things that I wanted people to understand is that your website needs to be your publishing center. Absolutely. How many people do you know that they go out and they, they spend time on Facebook, they, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, whatever? I mean, there's how, how many social media platforms are there now? Way, too, way more than I know about. Right. But the one thing you do is they end up spending so much time out on these platforms. And the one thing I say is start first with your website. You take your, your radio show, you put it on your website. Mm -hmm. I take my TV show, I put it on my website. I share it from my website out to... Absolutely. Because why? Well, because it brings a, you're, you're getting to be part of their circle now. So if you're putting out this television show and I'm sharing this television show, we're also expanding our communities and we're overlapping. And I think that's part of you know, building the relationships. But I have to say, one of the things, especially for women, when you go onto a website, it has to be, you have to tell somebody, push here, link below, tell them what to do, because everybody assumes, oh, they're on my website, and so it's gonna be really easy. It isn't. You have to tell them. The purple button below that says push here, is what you have to do. Here's the television show I just did with Patrick Dewar. Push this button, because that's the thing that people don't remember, is you have to tell them, you have to direct them. One of the things that's important, and, and this is again, just being realistic, is that you're really talking to a, a, a child in big clothing, mm. okay? Most of us stop aging emotionally at about 13. <laughs> and I if you ever wanna test that. that theory, just stub somebody's toe. <laughs> 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 say, say no, <laughs> and, and they're like, uh, uh, uh. It, it, they revert back to that 12, 13, 14 year old junior sure. high school kid, right? Well, if that's the case, then in a sense, yes, pr people are, there's lots of brilliant people, mm -hmm. but be direct, know what you're saying. And again, throw that, that uh, slide back up there on, on there, just to show the image of web first, see, you've got your, your website first, and then you share that out to your friends, and then out to social media. That's really, really important 
because again, you want people to dialogue with you on your website, not on just on social media. You respond, reply, like, share, whatever out there on those different things, but you don't have to spend as much time. Right. In fact, doing using this model, I, I reduced my time out on the social media platform by hours and hours and hours. I mean, it was just so it was like 20 minutes versus two hours. So, with that, let's let's move on to the next the, the next point, which really has to do with. Um, Google. Oh my God, do you remember the, that show? Um, it was the one with the plant that said, feed me. Yes, I do. Okay. I think that's aging us. Yeah, I, 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 I so I, believe that's aging us. Because a lot I, of people shop that... of horrors. <laughs> horrors. Little shop Horror, of horrors. horrors. Yeah, I have to be careful about that. So the point is, is that that's what Google has become. They want content continuously, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, if that's the case, then here, here's the problem with it, guys. Um, who among us has that many hours in the day? I, I, I don't know about you, but at the end of the day, I have an option. I can either create more content or I can go to sleep. Right. Now, I'm not of the mindset that I'll sleep a lot when I die. I don't want to rush to that conclusion yeah, no. very mm -mm. quickly. <laughs> so with that in mind, think first about that. You, you need to create content. But what we've found is some ways to create content instantly. For those of us that talk faster than we type, I talk a lot faster than I type. And, I, and I, I will say, just as an aside, I know that this may seem like a, uh, a drink of water from a fire hydrant today. We only have 30 minutes to get all these points to you effectively. So with that, I'll move on <laughs> and say, <laughs> you know, you've got to create content. Mm -hmm. You do the radio show. What are some other things that you do that are attached to your website? I, I have two books that I've written. I have another one that I know is coming out sooner or later because I have a lot of stuff that's in my head that needs to come out. Um, I have workbooks. I have different products. I have an e-learning platform. I have a, a sales club. But I do want to say one thing with caution about content. You know, you can, you can deliver and you can develop content. You can do it every single day, every single night, every single week. However, unless you have people that you're going to share it with, if you only have, you know, 12 people that you're talking to, well, those 12 people can't do everything that you want. So I worked with a strategist and he said, first you have to build horizontally before you build vertically. And the vertical part is your content. So great, you've got content. If you need new stuff, Uncle Google has everything you need anyway. Just, you know, do an article. But be careful that you don't, you know, you're not sharing it with enough people and you don't have those strategic partners in the JVs because that is crucial this way in order to warrant this. Does that make sense? It does to me. And, and one of the things that's really important is find other places. Like I noticed that you submit your stuff to other platforms. Whether totally. it's like uh, when I say other platforms, they're, they're you know, the alternative board in this area has asked me to contribute a, a, an article on a monthly basis. There's another group that's asked me to contribute on a monthly basis, and I said absolutely love to. You know, so I, I create content over here, and I just shipped it. It's repurposing. Right. Repurposing. And, and I do lots of other radio shows, not just my own, because that's other platforms that I may not have access to. You've been on my show. I've been on your show. There's two different communities. Even though we're connected, our communities may not be. So if you just continue to be a guest blogger or on a guest a radio show or a TV show or, or anything else where you can get that information out and build your community, that's what you want to do. Absolutely. And I know that there are several places that, you know, you can't, that are very open to interviewing you and, uh, or, you know, that you could create interviews for others. One that I use a lot now is Hangouts, Google Plus Hangouts. I'll create one. I'm working on one right now called What's Your Nine Pound Pearl? Mm -hmm. It's that lesson you paid more than you should have for. And I have so many lessons that I can <laughs> share with you for your nine pounder. <laughs> Believe me, so yeah. I'm looking forward to having yeah. you on that. But the, the idea is that that's an easy one. There's Blog Talk Radio. That's another one I'm going to be on next week on one of my friend's shows. So you can create this stuff, content, video is king, Google loves, here's a good one. You know, this is a rider downer. If you want Google's love, you got to play with their toys. Absolutely. Absolutely. Get it? And, and you know, you, again, you're saying something that's really important. So here you are, and you're doing, a, you know, um, someone else's TV show, a radio show, and you're on Blog Talk, or whatever it is, or you're doing a webinar, a telesummit. You know, all the um, computers have a camera. So when you're doing a webinar or you, whatever, record it, because guess what? That becomes a product. 
If you do a, a guest blog for somebody else, it becomes a product. I have so many different um, introductions for all my shows. I know I already have a book there because there's some amazing things. You just want to repurpose. Don't keep creating new stuff and recreating the wheel. You don't have to. And it doesn't cost anything to repurpose it. One of the things that's really funny that I, I've, I've thought about recently, I was, I was, I was submitting a, a chapter called uh, Hangouts mm -hmm. to Social Media Wealth, Dean Lindsay's new book. I'm really excited about that. And the more that I got involved in looking at and, and, and doing the research for and doing the Hangouts, the, the, my editor says, Pat, you, you, ought to, you ought to do some, another book as well. And, and the, the subject of the Nine Pound Pearl came up. And she goes, you ought to do one called What's Your Nine Pound Pearl? Well, as, as I started thinking about it, I thought, how could I create it? Well, create a Hangout, transcribe the Hangout. There you go. Now, literally, if you do it once a week, once a quarter, you've got a volume one, a volume two, volume three. So you can create books on Kindle especially where you can show the video and the, the, the transcript instantly. I mean, wow, now you've got Amazon marketing for you, right? right. Right. And the other thing is, you know, I'm on Fox Business News a lot. I'm their gender expert. They labeled me gender expert, which I love. I love that. But all the interviews that I've done are not necessarily all of my work. It could be a crazy story. Well, there you go, because now you have the story, you have the interview, and you create a blog post. And so now that becomes something else that you can use, and you share it. And I can say, Pat, I have got this great story for you, and you just move it right over. So that's what I'm saying. I mean, you can repurpose almost anything, and it costs you... Absolutely. It's, it, that's the thing. Everything, think everything you do has five to seven uses. Absolutely. And if you don't, then you're just wasting your time. Absolutely. So two more points and, and we'll call it quits for the, this, this uh, product, if you want to call it. One is learn how to speak. Right. I don't mean just like learn English. or I mean learn how to speak effectively. Notice I didn't say like an expert. We just have to be able to get our point across, right? Absolutely. And, you know, uh, and that's another way to get your message out there and to get yourself known. And I always tell people that are aspiring speakers, go to every Rotary, go to every chamber, go to every local association, every local group, because they're looking for speakers. On a weekly basis. On a usually. weekly basis. And you get to practice your signature talk, and you can become a speaker. But guess what? You also have somebody videoing you or recording you, and there you go, you're repurposing it again. And the, the video or the recording, I mean, there's an app for that, so to speak. There's an app for everything. <laughs> so, so think about that, learn how to speak. Now, uh, there are some professional organizations that do things like that, Toastmasters, great place. It, it takes a little while, but it's great, great platform. It's darn near free, and I think it's awesome. Uh, there are, there's um, Dale Carnegie, I call a shout out for, for those guys. Jeff Cockrell is in the local area, DFW. Yep. Great trainer yep. uh, in speaking. Um, Lauren, uh, Lawrence Whaley is another one uh, for, for the, uh, that, that, that realm of uh, speaker training. Um, Brian Flanagan mm -hmm. with Ziegler. Ziegler has a, an excellent essential presentation skills. Those are usually, they cost a, a couple of thousand bucks maybe. They're two days, but think of it as internalizing um, two, two years of Toastmasters in about two days. Right. Your right. effectiveness goes way up. But you have to be able to be comfortable doing that. And so I always encourage you to do something for free first. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and once you get a little bit comfortable, then move over to that because you really need to have some, uh, you know, uh, an authority on speaking to help you out, but I think that you need to just get in front of people. You know, whether it's a little tiny group or a big group, it doesn't matter. Just get in front of them, get comfortable, and learn your signature talk. Absolutely. Now, uh, one other thing about that. For those that, that uh, either haven't been to training, haven't gone to training, kind of a intro step is don't be like the average speaker. They step up to a podium or lectern or something and they pull their eyes out set them and they look at themselves while they're presenting and they're ripping themselves apart while they're presenting their first talk or their first few talks. Look, don't do that. Put your, head, your eyes back in your head. Ask yourself one question when you step up to the podium. And that is, what do these people need to know right now? And how can I serve them? Because it's not about you. Because the subconscious then engages and goes, oh, well, they just need, they need to know this. And it delivers it. So what do they need to know right now?
The last point I want to uh, really cover before we talk about some of the things that you, you're doing and, and I'm doing is a thing called a mastermind group. Right. Now, that comes right out of the Think and Grow Rich uh, by Napoleon Hill that, that literally had a great group of people that used to meet together, which were like Harvey Firestone and Henry Ford and uh, Thomas Edison, a few other bright guys. And the one comment they said is that independently, we know we're pretty bright guys. I mean, they, they could acknowledge they were. They were the most brilliant and rich of the day. But they said when they got together, it was literally like there wasn't anything they couldn't accomplish. Yes. Now, you run a mastermind group, and it's for women. For women, yes. And I run a mastermind group, and it's for men. And, but the qualifications to be in your mastermind are? You know, it's not necessarily the qualifications. It's the type of people that we want. You know, we're looking for entrepreneurs, and we're looking for um, executive women, people that are looking to get to the next level. You know, I am the profitability expert for women, but I also focus on sales. And so that's part of the qualifications. And you have to make the commitment to do this for a minimum of six months. Mm -hmm. And the, the changes are pretty drastic. I, I totally get it. You, you know, for me, uh, typically the business has to be generating a million dollars in sales or more. And that you have to really want to employ the, uh, the tools that we'll mm -hmm. talk about. I don't try to be the guru. Right. Uh, I really just try to bring the right people in the room so that the mastermind that's created uh, has delivers the uh, the best results. So one thing, uh, how can people connect with you, uh, Judy? <laughs> oh, uh, selling in a skirt. <laughs> uh, selling in a skirt. Uh, my website is sellinginaskirt.com. My Facebook is Facebook forward slash selling in a skirt. My email is Judy at Selling in a Skirt. I try to make it very easy. Everything is Selling in a Skirt. Yeah. Twitter is at Selling in a Skirt. And, and I have to admit, I've never seen you in a pair of jeans. And you never will. You <laughs> never will. That's part of my brand. You have to have an irresistible brand. You have to live it. So you will not find me in jeans. Awesome. Well, as we're, as we're wrapping up this product, uh, just as a quick review, you know, the first thing is really find the right people to bring along with you and collaborate with. Second is give first and have hooks, have Velcro. Third is have a target that you really want to hone in on. Fourth is share properly. Share from your website out to social media. Create content, repurpose. Everything has five to seven uses. Fourth, uh, the, the next thing is the uh, fifth is the uh, is video. Really video is king, but it's about Google. If you want Google's love, you've got to play with their toys. Uh, next is learn how to speak effectively. Last is find a group of people that mm -hmm. you can collaborate with. I'm Pat Dewar and I hope you've enjoyed these seven keys for marketing without money. If you want to get a hold of me you can just uh, my information's been on the on the screen and we'll talk to you all next time.